Hi. Hi. Greetings from El Salvador. Hi, this is Melissa Altman and... Evie Altman. And we wanted to give you an update on how things are going here in El Salvador during the quarantine. So a little update for Acomoherza, my ministry where I'm working. Uh, right now, we have just been allowed to go back to work. So the country just reopened yesterday. So we'll be seeing how things are going. Um, we also have partnered with different uh, NGOs and we were able to put together a few food baskets. Had, we were hit by a huge tropical storm in the beginning of June, the end of May. No one in the cooperative's home was destroyed. However, there were a lot of difficulties and it was really, it was a tough week. Akumuhersa worked with International Partners for Mission, one of our fellow organizations here in El Salvador. IPM donated roof uh, laminas as well as waterproofing equipment so that the members of the cooperative could better protect their home during this rainy season. So throughout the pandemic, we've not only dealt with huge rainstorms, also a lack of food, but through it all, the members of the cooperative have continued to work and be together in solidarity. Evie, Evie, what have you been up to during since our last Meet a Missioner Monday? Well, uh, school started again, so I'm having a lot of classes in Spanish uh, and in English, which is good, so I don't forget everything I learned. That is <laughs> in good. Spanish. That is good. And I played with my dogs. I read a lot of books. I baked a lot too. And throughout the pandemic, we will continue to adapt and change and grow, not only as a family, but also as missionaries here in El Salvador. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't seen our first Meet a, Meet a Missioner Monday, just keep watching. Bye. Adios. Gracias. Those two are a tough act to follow, but I have a couple of important Meet a Missioner Monday announcements for you. If you haven't seen Evie and Melissa's original interview, please keep watching and that full interview will come up momentarily. If you have seen it, maybe there's someone you can share it with that would enjoy hearing about their life and their experience and mission. Now to give you an update on what we have coming up. Next week, we will be back with our live interviews. I'm excited to again get to share virtual space with all of you. We're going to take five weeks and look at the issue of food security. This is an issue that is really increasing in these times of COVID-19 and the number of folks that are having trouble accessing proper nutrition and the food they need just to survive. So we're going to take five weeks just to pretty much to talk about that issue, share some of the facts around it, and some of the projects that our missionaries are involved with that are related to food security, food insecurity. So first up, September 14th, we will be traveling to El Salvador to talk to Anne Gregg, who has been working on food security issues for 27 years there with the Soya Project. That will be 11 a.m. back in our live time slot on Facebook and YouTube. Then two weeks after that, on September 28th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we'll be doing a panel on solutions to food insecurity. And we'll be talking with three of our missioners, Rich, who's currently working in Kenya, Peg, who's in El Salvador, and Sammy, who is in Haiti, and learning more about the projects that they're involved with and how those are meeting basic needs, providing food, and also trying to provide sustainable solutions for the future. As you can see, Sammy works with some chickens, so Hopefully we'll get to hear more about them on the 28th. And then to wrap up our series, we'll be traveling to Bolivia to talk with Juan specifically about some of the programs he has been doing or the projects he's been doing during COVID-19 to meet basic food needs and what that looks like there in Bolivia. Por la primera vez, vamos a hacer una entrevista bilingüe. Entonces, si habla español, vamos a hacer todo en español y en inglés. So for the first time, we're going to do a bilingual interview for Juan's interview. So if you have any friends, family, fellow church members that you think would love to hear about Juan, but maybe they only speak Spanish, please invite them to this interview. 
we will make sure that they can also hear about Juan's great ministry. So we look forward to sharing these five weeks about food security with you. Keep watching to see Melissa and Evie's original interview, and I will see you right here next week at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Until then, stay safe, be well, and peace be with you. Good morning, and welcome to Meet a Missioner Monday. I'm your host, Karen Bortvet Estrada, and I'm very excited to be with you here again for another opportunity to check in on some of our brothers and sisters around the world and see how they're doing in this time of physical distancing. As you may know, on May 15th, we celebrated the World Day of the Family, which is a United Nations holiday focused on seeing how families are really helping to build our world up and make it a better place. So we thought, what better opportunity than now to check in on one of our mission families. I would like to especially welcome the kids that are joining us today. I know we have young people across the United States that we're going to tune in and hear from Miss Evie Altman, who is our featured guest. As with our Meet a Missioner Mondays in the past, we encourage you to let us know where you're watching from. It's very exciting for us to see that we have people across the country or around the world. So please feel free to check in in the comments. The comment section is either below this video or onto the right hand side, I believe, depending on what kind of device you're watching on. And we would also love for you to send in your questions. We have some prepared questions, but our featured guests have always said that their favorite questions are the ones that come from you, the folks who are watching. So any question you have, feel free to put in that comment box and we'll get to it just as soon as we can. Now I am delighted to introduce to you Miss Evie Altman and her mom, Melissa Altman. The Altman family moved to El Salvador back in 2014 when Evie was just three years old and she has grown up overseas in El Salvador. So she's going to share with us today some of her experiences living in El Salvador. Hi, Melissa and Evie. Hi. Good morning, Karen. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. The first, us. the first question we have for you, Evie, is I know that now you guys are living in San Salvador, but before you lived in La India. So I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about those two different parts of El Salvador where you lived. Well, in La India, there was, there were dirt roads and there were a lot of uh, chickens and cows and goats and it was the first experience I ever had as a kid that I could actually go and walk to my friend's house with my brother. So is this picture, is this the road by your house? Yeah and this is my friend's house. We, we were catching chickens. <laughs> What kinds of things did you do whenever you went to your friend's house to play? We catch chickens. Other than that? And we like to <laughs> climb trees and play hide and seek and tag and imagine stuff. Good. And how did you guys get around when you lived in India? Did you have to walk everywhere? We had a pickup truck and we would offer kids classes mm -hmm. and and we would offer kids art classes at the Centro Pastoral. Like the parish which, center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we would offer them rides, but on the pickup truck, but one day uh, they kept saying rapido, rapido, which means faster. But my dad said, you can't say that anymore. I, I, and then the, the kids asked me and Eli, how do you say it rapido in English? And we said faster. And now we just hear faster, faster. <laughs> Did your dad drive faster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were screaming. So like the, the adults in the neighborhood you know, the kids had, were having, a, always had a blast. And we would do this like two or three times a week and just go around to the rural neighborhood because kids didn't have any other things to do in the afternoon. And so they would just like basically listen for all the noise of the kids and then run out to the pickup truck and we'd pick them up, bring them to the center, have activities like art classes and a little library. They would scream faster, faster. And then we'd take them, you know, back home after. So that was a lot of the activities. 
a lot of the fun in the countryside. <laughs> and what language do you speak most of the time there in El Salvador? I mostly see, speak Spanish because all my friends are are Salvadoran. But also my a lot of my friends want to be like, hey, we speak English with me. I want to practice my English. So I like that they can help me in Spanish and I can help them in English. That's awesome. And who is the best in Spanish, you or your mom? I. Why? Okay. Because I learned Spanish before I learned English. Okay, now you got to translate for everyone watching who doesn't speak Spanish. Karen asked, who speaks better? In, in Spanish, you were your mom. And I said, me. Why? Because it, I learned Spanish before I, before I knew how to speak English correctly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I think there's lots of kids here in the U.S. that can probably relate to that, that might speak one language at home and another language everywhere else. <laughs> so in your neighborhood there, what are some of the special activities that you guys do? We did something called a pastorela, which was a Christmas play. It was about the, the, what you call it? It's whenever Jesus is born. It's when, it's a reenactment of when Mary had baby Jesus and all the shepherds, all the shepherds came and gave Mary gifts. Mm -hmm. And so one of the parts that I always got, every kid had to say mm -hmm. uh, like a little line, like I bring you this, Mary, because I bring you this for baby Jesus because said reason. And I always got um, one about a chicken. Aquí te traigo este pollito. No, eh, aquí, pollito te, eh, aquí te traigo este pollito. Pollito pelo, no te lo traje cocido porque no tenía carbón. It means here I bought, I brought you this little chicken. I didn't br bring it to you cooked because I didn't have any coal. And so each child brings a gift to the infant child, the infant child, and there's um, Christmas carols and a little dance that they do together. And it's something that we, it's very popular in El Salvador. And it's every day in December until Epiphany. And that was an and activity we, we loved. We started <laughs> practicing the end of October. And then we finally started do actually doing it in December 1st. Uh -huh. Wow. And do you do that where you live now in San Salvador too? Or was that just in La India? Well, we do a pastorela for school, which is we sing the songs. You can either... There was a a chorus, or there was, or you could be one of the, or you could be a shepherd like in La India. But I always got, I was always in the chorus. <laughs> but the difference was the pastorella in La India. We went to each, we each went to house. a different house every night, a different house every night. So. Some of the houses were further away, and some were closer. Some of the houses had dirt floors. Uh, some of the houses had tiled floors, so we got a chance to be in a lot of different places in our community for that, for those times. Good memories. For those that are just joining us, we're talking today with Miss Evie Altman and her mom, Melissa, who are serving as missionaries with us in El Salvador. And just a reminder, if you do have any questions for Evie or Melissa, feel free to put those in the comments section, and we will get to your questions soon so you can learn more about their experiences in El Salvador. So you said that you now have a pasarela at school. Are there other activities that you do in school there in El Salvador? We have something called a Maya week, which is the whole week we study about the Mayans. The Mayans are the, were the first people to come to Central America. And so for example, Every kid had to do a project about either my, my numbers, uh, gods, or temples. For example, I got, well, I, last year I got Tikal, which is a temple, a big temple in Guatemala. So I would have to memorize a line that said, like, for example, Tikal is located in Guatemala. It has da 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 And so... <laughs> And I would also, 
we would also have to make it. So we would get like, for example, recycled materials, boxes, and stuff like that. And we would have to make a pyramid to make it look like the temple. The temple. And on Friday, we would present it. At each grade would come, and they had like a little paper to fill out. And we would be like, and we would say our lines like, "This is Dika," and it's presented. Present it. Yeah, present it. Uh huh. That's very cool. And I never knew that da 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 was Spanish. Now I know. <laughs> So, Evie, if I were to come visit you in El Salvador, where would you take me? I would take you to Romero's house because he, Romero was a man who fought for the poor because he wanted them to have justice. And it, when you go there, it's like a mini museum because you could see his clothes what was in his wallet and stuff like that. So it was really fun and interesting. And I would also take you to a town called Ataco. It has- I think there's a picture of us in front of a beautiful mural that maybe yeah. we can show you. There's murals and there, I think there's a lot of beautiful uh, Salvador and, uh, Pinterest? Yeah. Like there's something called a capirucho, which is you got like a little stick and a cup and you have to... Uh, a traditional Salvadoran toy that is very popular here. They have things like that. And they really have almost every Salva traditional Salvadoran... Food or... Food. Yeah, yeah, food. Food and... Mm -hmm. And it's really, I think it's the most place that's like El Salvador, honestly. Yeah, and it's in the mountains and they have coffee fincas and it's cool. It's very picturesque. It's definitely a town that we'd like to take you if you come here, Karen, and anyone else who comes to visit us in El Salvador. <laughs> I have tried playing that game before. I'm very bad at it. That's the one where there's a ball on a string, right? You have yeah. to try to get it in the cup. <laughs> I'm bad at it too. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> So for those who are just joining us, we're talking with Miss Evie Altman and her mom, Melissa, in El Salvador. Remember, if you do have questions for them, put those in the comments, and they are very eager to get to your questions. So on this trip to El Salvador that we're planning, Evie, what am I going to get to eat? You would probably eat, well, personally, my favorites are pupusas, which are tortillas uh, with beans and cheese inside, or they could also have the roco, which is a flour that you can eat. And, or we would have Jamaica, which is hibiscus tea, except it's cold. They're mm -hmm. my favorite, so you would probably have them. <laughs> and here's a picture of us eating pupusas, pupusas. whenever we welcomed missioners uh, who came Juan and Duane, who came uh, years ago. And so one of our traditions is when new missioners come, we pick them up from the airport and go and eat pupusas because it's El Salvador's national food and it's delicious. That sounds great to me. Where I live here in Maryland, there's a large number of people from El Salvador and there's lots of places to get pupusas. So oh, I need to try the real ones in El Salvador too. Yes. So, Evie, your mom tells me that you are the unofficial youngest member of Acomujersa, which is the co-op where she works. I'm wearing a bracelet that was made by them today in honor of your interview. And I'm wondering if you can tell us more about Acomujersa. So, they mainly sew. It's a sewing cooperative, and they make traditional shirts, uh, Salvadoran shirts and bracelets and headbands and stuff like that. Bags and purses. And, mm -hmm. and they also have excursions and they have workshops. And most of the workshops are based off self-esteem. Like for example, once we did one of leadership where we had to make a poster. Oh, yeah, this one is, is self-esteem. Self-esteem. And we would also have excursions, which was like, we went to a public water park like everybody would pay like $8 or something and we would go there and there were big water slide, yeah. a big pool, sometimes uh, lots of typical Salvadoran food. 
Mm -hmm. food stands uh -huh. and it's, us. yeah <laughs> and what is it for what are the excursions really what do they help the women at the cooperative they, with? they pay like eight dollars some of it goes to the cooperative and then the rest goes for the bus ride mm -hmm. and the rental because they stay there for like a, a day mm -hmm. like we leave at seven and we get there at, and we leave there at mm -hmm. And it gives, it's a nice day for Salvadorans to see their own country and see their own uh, parks and enjoy the day, kind of a, a little mini vacation. So it's affordable for everybody and the cooperative makes a little bit of money, which is good too. That's awesome. I'm going to have to tell my boss that we need to take an excursion to a yeah. water park. So if you're listening, boss, put it on the list. <laughs> so now I'm going to give you a break. Evie, I have a question for your mom. <laughs> Melissa, we hear a lot about families coming from El Salvador or from other places in Central America to the United States, but we don't hear so much about people from the United States going to live in Central America. Can you tell us about what led you to make that decision as a family? Yeah, sure. We um, Both Peter and I were working in jobs in social justice and service um, in the United States. He was the executive director of Good Shepherd Volunteers, and I was campus minister at Bishop Lachlan Memorial High School, a Lasallian high school in downtown Brooklyn. And we both really loved our jobs. Um, but I think both of us were sort of feeling like it was time for a change and sort of a little bit restless with what's next. So we both talked about kind of switching, maybe a, doing a different job. I even applied to a different job, but then we start, sort of started to think about, we basically said, you get one life to live. What, what would we really like to do? And we started to really think about what life would be like to live in another country and serve, um, you know, similar to what we were doing in the United States, but in a different way, in a different culture, with, in it, with a, using a different language. Um, so we found Mary and Ole missioners, um, my great uncle's a Mary and Ole priest. And so we were somewhat familiar, but we basically said, all right, now's the time to take the risk. And uh, I think there's a lot of risk whenever you think about raising children in another, in a third world country, in a developing country rather. Um, but we decided that we thought that the reward would be greater than the risk. And as you can hear from some of Evie's answers, um, that's definitely been the case. So um, we're really happy with the decision to come here and live as a family. And there's been a lot, a lot of blessings from moving here. That's awesome. So Evie, there's, like I mentioned, there's a lot of kids probably in the U.S. who are bilingual like you are, and there might be some who only speak Spanish. If you were going to say something to our viewers that usually speak Spanish about El Salvador, what would you tell them about El Salvador in Spanish? Que todos están muy, te ayudan un montón, y si vengan a visitarme, eh, <laughs> Y que todo aquí está muy bonito, los lugares, las personas están muy buena onda, y sí. Mm -hmm. That, mm -hmm. Do you want me to do it or do you want to? Now someone's got to translate. <laughs> <laughs> she said the people are really helpful, the people are really kind, um, it's also a beautiful country, I really would love if you came to visit, what else? And the people are really, the people are really great. So we won't put you on the spot, Melissa, so we can compare if her Spanish really is better. We'll let you off the hook. You don't have to say the same thing in Spanish. <laughs> so I know that your lives have also shifted like everyone else's with the quarantine going into effect. Can you tell us about how that's impacted you guys? How long have you been in quarantine now in El Salvador? Well, we've been in quarantine for about two months now. And the thing that's changed most for me is that I don't go to school anymore. I just have, they give us work and then we have to get on calls each day and I have like five calls a day. And for me, um, for the cooperative, uh, basically when the president uh, put down, the, started the, the quarantine, um, all businesses had to close. So the cooperative uh, was included in that. 
And so I haven't been to physically to my ministry site since that started. However, I've been doing a lot of work with the members, not only checking in on them, accompanying them, but also we've started to produce masks. Um, and so we have, yeah, we, this is us modeling some of the masks that we made at Akamuharsa. And so some of the women have sewing machines in their home. So they've been able to continue that task. And we also were able to produce masks for a local nonprofit. Um, so I definitely see that my, well, I don't know what my ministry is going to look like after the quarantine, but that's one thing that we've started, we've tried to continue to do because if we don't produce anything, we don't sell anything, then there's no income coming in. Uh, a second issue that I've been really working on is um, food. It's the most basic need and without people, pe without being able to go and work, that is the, the need that the women in the cooperative and the people in the community have. So I've worked, I've teamed up with another organization, a nonprofit, International Partners for Mission. And between the two of us, we've organized food baskets that are things like basics, like rice, beans, oil, sugar, coffee, pasta, things like that, that have already gone out to some of the members of the cooperative who are in, in dire need of food right now. And so we're going to continue uh, basically assessing what the needs are, are and trying to meet them and seeing how we can uh, reach out to the community. So um, I miss being able to go to work every day, just like you all do, I'm sure in the, in the United States. Um, it's different. It's more challenging. Um, but you know, we got to just keep doing it and we're happy that we're still here in El Salvador. So we can, we'll stay in quarantine and be healthy so that whenever we see what the needs are as Marinola missioners, we'll go out and find ways to, to help the people. Great. Evie, we have a message for you from Carol Smith, who says, I remember playing catch with you in the pool at the beach. Fun. Uh Oh, from probably a, I'm, is that a fab participant fab? possibly <laughs> possible so Mary Nolan missioners has something called friends across borders trips that you get to go and visit missioners overseas so I know Melissa and Evie both help a lot with those guests when they come to El Salvador there's a question from Bob Short who works with the Mary Nolan affiliates which I think you already answered Evie but maybe your mom can answer her opinion cuál es tu plato favorito I love pupusas. I mean, I know it is, it is El Salvador's national dish for a reason. It's still, they're delicious. <laughs> Everyone's got to love the pupusas. I haven't yet met someone who has had a pupusa and says, mm, not so good. <laughs> So another question, Evie, for you, what kinds of games and sports do kids and adults play in El Salvador? What has been your favorite game to play? And Mike also asks if they play basketball there, which is his favorite. Mm. Uh, we do play basketball at school. I'm actually, before the quarantine, I went to basketball practice after school. And I also went to an art class after school. Uh, soccer is very popular here too. Yes. When we lived in the Campo in La India, part of our program with the kids at the pastoral center, we always did an art class or had a library book kind of reading. And after we always had recreation time and it always included soccer. So soccer is really popular here. Yeah. So Susan Nagley, who's also one of our missioners, commented that there is a Swahili conga behind you. Can you explain yes, to us? Yes. This, this is actually from our friends, Michael and Ashley Lean, who were in Tanzania um, with our class, Karen, within our same class as Karen and myself and Evie. Um, and we were given this gift um, after we we're actually the godparents for Ashley and Michael's daughter and we were given this beautiful gift and rather than have it sort of tucked away we put it on display so it always reminds me of them 
That's awesome. Someone who, it says, Dr. Altman question, do you miss your family in the U.S.? Random question from Menlo Park. Ah, that's, that's, uh, that's probably <laughs> uncle. <laughs> My brother-in-law. Do you miss the people? Do you miss your family from the United States? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course we do. Of we course. definitely do. I mean, um, you know, that's probably the hardest part about, you know, living in El you know, Salvador is not being able to be a part of those holiday, those special events um, and things like that. But the beauty of technology is the fact that we're able to still connect so much with all of our members of our family whenever, you know, we have Zoom calls. Zoom calls and FaceTime calls with our family, um, which really allows us to be connected, which I think is really important because as the kids are growing up, they they have to have a they should have a relationship with their family regardless of the distance, and so we're able to do this thing here and still have a relationship with our family. So yeah, definitely miss my family. Sounds like you guys could give folks recommendations on how to do that when you can't physically be with your families, since a lot of people are experiencing that for the first time. Yeah. There's another question from Colleen. Colleen, I might say your last name wrong. Rufo? Oh, Colleen from La Roche. Hi, Colleen. <laughs> who asked, Evie, have you ever been back to the U.S. to visit since you've lived in El Salvador? If you have, what is different in the United States from El Salvador? I have. And what's different is, I don't know how to describe it. I don't really know. How yeah. To. I'll think about it. Okay. That's okay. Good. We'll get a, an answer back to you. So stay tuned on our social media and Evie will get back to us with an answer. Let's see, next question here. They're coming in. So if you do have questions, remember, put those in the comments on either Facebook or YouTube, and we will get those questions here to Melissa and Evie. Claire asks, Melissa and Evie, what is some advice you might give to a child or adult of a family considering mission? Wow. Come here. Come, um, <laughs> says Evie. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, Don't forget it. Yeah, I think. Uh, for us as parents, um, I think that really sort of being on the same page as parents and, and, and sort of um, understanding that there are challenges that, you know, kind of come with moving away. But I think we've always sort of, dis we've always decided that we would make the best decision for for our kids and you know that that Mary Noel, the great thing about an organization like Mary Noel and Missioners is um, we've always been told that you know you are their parents and you know you make those decisions so we've always been um, really kind of focused on that and and the other thing is it's you know, kids have a routine. Um, we wake up, we eat breakfast, we get ready for school, we go to school, we come back, we have homework, and all that stuff stays the same, regardless of what country you're in for the most part. Uh, the things around it, yes, they change, but um, we actually found that having that routine and having our kids actually helped us um, when we were going through culture shock and, and the difficulty of learning a language. Um, it really actually centered us uh, to be able to get through it. So um, it really does take everybody to be on the same page in order to, to, to kind of do this thing. So someone who is showing up as grapes to vino asks, what's your favorite ice cream in El Salvador? We love do you have to think cream. about that one? <laughs> ice cream. Ice cream. San Julian. It's, there's a place called San Julian that serves saucered ice cream and pretty good. Yeah, and the great thing about El Salvador is it never gets cold, so you can have ice cream all oh, year yeah. round. <laughs> but what flavor? Uh, I'm kind of plain. I like vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can add that to my tour list when I get to El Salvador. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Take me there. Yeah. Uh, this is a very, very serious question. Are you ready for this, Evie? Mary Delaney, who's a friend of yours, wants mm -hmm. to know if your dad is still cheating at Uno. Yes. 
Okay, course, not even hesitation. Yes. yes. <laughs> He's not here to defend himself. <laughs> uh, Lois Har would like you to remind her how long you have been a missioner family. Hey, Lois. Um, we have been here since 2014. Uh, in January, it was six years. So Evie has now spent more of I'm her. Yeah, she says I'm Salvadoran. <laughs> she spent more time in El Salvador than in, in the United States at this point. Rich Lassard has a question for you, Melissa, and also says, I still wear the beautiful shirt you mailed me a couple of years ago. Ah. Rich is wondering if you're still able to gather with other missionaries there in San Salvador. Okay, great question. Um, we can't physically um, get together. The quarantine here is very strict. So all of us are, uh, you can't leave your, your municipality. So we're not able to physically be together, but every Tuesday morning we gather here on Zoom and we have an opportunity to pray and also share um, where we're at right now and how we're doing, it's sort of like a touchdown. So we are able to keep connected with our fellow Marino Lay missionaries, and that really is helpful, especially as things are things are changing always with the political scene and things like that. So it's helpful for us to sort of keep an eye on what's happening here. So we have another question for you, Evie, from Louisa, who is also a mission kid. Her family, she is the daughter of George and Anne, who were on Meet a Missioner Monday a few weeks ago in Tanzania, and she would like to know if you have pets. Yes, we have two dogs and a fish. <laughs> we have a little chihuahua, and we have a medium-sized boxer, and a little beta fish. Good question. Very cool. And her sister, we can't miss Susanna's question as well, wants to know if you made your first communion in El Salvador and what that was like. She made hers last year in Tanzania. Oh, cool. Uh, I, yeah, I made my first Holy Communion last year in December. Mm -hmm. And what was it like? It was like a special, special church, like a special ceremony uh-huh special mm -hmm. and we got our own bench that's what i remember <laughs> yeah in the church <laughs> we got our own reserved family bench <laughs> and my grandparents were there yeah and and my parents came to el salvador um for that which was really cool awesome another question from a kid who was born into mission miss fiona lean would like to know what your favorite part of school is evie uh, my friends and my teachers. Great answer. Questions just keep coming. Give me a second to check and see which ones I've missed here. Bob Short has another question actually also about school. Is most or most of your classes in Spanish or are some in English? Most of my classes are in English, but we also have a few classes in Spanish classes in Spanish. Like we have Estudios Sociales, which is social studies, like learning about the Salvadoran culture. And we also have Lenguaje, which is language, and Orthografía, which is writing. Mm -hmm. But other than that, everything else is English. So Ted has a question for you guys as well. He would like to know what gives you hope right now? I think um, for me, it gives, the hope is the Salvadoran people are very resilient. Um, they've lived through a civil war and there's just sort of this basic idea that we're gonna get through this and it might be tough right now, but we're gonna, we're gonna find a way through this pandemic, um, through the situation. And there's always a, there's a phrase um, Today I'll give to you because tomorrow I might be in need. So there's this sense of, for me, hope that um, I'm going to be able to be there for my neighbor. Um, we've seen some of those different acts of hope through people um, gathering their ex extra food, actually, and giving it to other people who don't have it. So there are acts of solidarity that give me a lot of hope. And we have one last question for you, Evie. What do you like about being a Marino Lay missioner? Um, 
I like how I get to see all my missionary friends and how I kind of get to help uh, El Salvador in a way. Like I've I visited like families and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I like to be able to help. And it sounds like El Salvador has also helped you because you speak Spanish better than any gringa I know. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Susan shared with us that the Swahili behind you actually means the goodness of God is present every day. And she says, especially through your family, which I think is a great way to wrap up. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us. Thank you for your service as Mary Nole missioners and for joining us today. Um, we are very grateful to hear all of your experiences and thank you Evie for being willing to share with us. If people do <laughs> yeah. still have questions for Evie or Melissa, feel free to put those in the comments and we will make sure that those get answered and we'll send you a response back on that. Now, and I haven't done a lot of digital learning, but I think that it's my job to get to give out homework now. So this is my homework, especially for any of the young people that are watching. In this time, we're all struggling and it's hard to be in quarantine. So your homework for the day is first to take one arm and put it across yourself, take the other arm and put it across yourself and give yourself a hug because this is a tough time and we all need more hugs. And the second part of your homework is to find those adults in your life, the people that you share a household with, your parents, and go and give them a hug because we all need a whole lot more hugs in our life right now. So you that's have your mission assignment to go out. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> we'll do that homework, right? Yeah. <laughs>